we about to unpack this. And I decided to pull up an article and just give you another perspective, not mine or not yours, just another perspective. So check this out. First, let me set the scenario. So this is in response to this person telling me in another comment that most people don't see color, that they're just Mexican, right? And then they go on to say, the problem you create in your head about color, seeing color, when there's billions of people who don't waste their time thinking about skin color, grow up and quit feeling sorry for yours. <sighs> now let's talk about what's wrong with saying I don't see color from a different perspective, okay? Now this is fact that we all see color. Even people of color see color. In this article, it talks about, let me just break this down real quick. Consider how in India and other parts of the world, skin bleaching cream is used as an attempt to feel more socially acceptable. African-American grandmothers speak of how they will worry more often for certain grandchildren than others, knowing they're at a higher threat of police violence due to the complexion of their skin. Minority groups in any society will be fully aware of the other minority groups and conscious of what differences exist between their experience, their respective experiences. We all see and acknowledge the gradient. Then it goes on to say, I, I like this. Color is a very real part of the daily lives of billions of people. Research has even shown that even being literally blind is still not a barrier to recognizing differences in race and culture. People who cannot see with their eyes are still able to acknowledge and understand variants in culture and non-visual keys. And I can vouch for this because my stepson is legally blind and he says all the time that he receives racism and he knows where it's coming from. All right, side note. <laughs> And it goes on to say further that not only is there sufficient evidence to suggest that recognizing race or color does not require eyesight, but further to that, the idea of being non-prejudiced is debunked by the vast body of research that speaks of unconscious racial bias in adults and children alike, and even with children of color towards people of color. And it says to understand that part, further see effects of systemic racism, or internalized racism. So the sentiment of not seeing color is not just a lie, but a scientifically proven impossibility. Further to that, it is offensive and contrary to a person's lived existence, it tries to deny a person's very real and tangible physical existence, their appearance, their cultural heritage, their reality and distinctiveness, something that all people should be able to acknowledge assert and share openly with joy and confidence Oof! i love this i love this even more deeply damaging can you see me okay <laughs> even more deeply damaging um where are we at the denial of a person's physical distinctness and their cultural heritage is dismissive and insensitive and insensitive insensitivity around the lived experience of all people who have been subjected to systemic racism in a society that has disadvantaged them at every conceivable, conceivable level and every possible moment. So you even saying that, it says, this statement of not seeing color may seem as though it is benign, innocent and well-meaning but it's actually just another attempt at the erasure of culture, heritage, and diversity, a mechanism which the colonial project em employed with such devastating persecutions that indigenous people all over the world are still feeling, reeling its effects. And it further goes on further to say, <laughs> it's not hard to understand how the erasure of culture language, diversity, and uniqueness can come across as offensive and insensitive. And it says, I assume everyone reading this is familiar, and if you're not familiar with this, you need to research this. Colonialism, slavery, white Australia policy, I need to read that, I don't know what that is. The one drop policy, whitewashing of history, can, can we keep going? 
and note, offering the above explanation to someone who says they don't see color will sometimes trigger them into saying something along the lines of, but that's not what I meant, <laughs> or you're misunderstanding my words, or that wasn't my intention, right? It's actually the response we get every day in everyday conversations and in training workshop workshops. More information for you, I love this. And this is when we can look into the theme of narcissistic traits, denial of harm and victim blaming for further clarification. Victim blaming, Ooh, that sounds familiar, right? I will elaborate on a later date of this theme of not listening to people and insisting that intention is what matters and not the outcome. Mm, this, is, this is amazing. It is essential to remember that one's intentions does not dissolve corporability. But for now, we will continue with this discourse analysis and now look into what function the phrase serves in context within which is being used. I'm gonna have to keep reading this. Yeah, this may be a little boring of how I read it, but I think I wanna continue on to like a part two and continue. It's like, let's see, three, it's like four, ooh. It's like four, four parts to this. So this is part one. Tune in to the next three parts after I finish this.